I'm name dropping. I don't mean to. It just happens to be true. I was sitting with Kim Harrison in a, in a, a coffee shop. We were having tea and we were talking about the things we want to do next. What are we going to want to do next? And I had just discovered that um, my grandfather was uh, on, on one. One of my grandfathers was uh, about half Cherokee, half Cajun. So I wanted to explore this Cherokee um, background that I have. Uh, I'm not a part of the tribe. He wasn't. But his the, the, the people in his lineage before him were. And they are on the rolls, the Cherokee rolls. So I was very interested in learning about my Cherokee heritage. And I wanted to put it together with research for a book. So immediately my character is a Cherokee who doesn't know anything about her, uh, her own history so that I can learn with her. That way, I, again, I didn't have to know anything about her background, except that for her not to know that she's Cherokee, she couldn't know her parents. And so I wanted her to be a very old Cherokee, which meant she had to have this block in her mind from when she first turned back human. The only thing I knew about her was that she was going to ride a Harley, what shotgun she was going to use to kill paranormal bad guys, and that she was um, sort of like Jack Reacher, and she went to help. She would go to help people, except my character got paid for the jobs. She took paying jobs to protect humans from vampires or werewolves or whatever. That's all I knew when I started out, and I had to learn about Harley's. I had to learn about what I wanted her bike to be like, and what she would need to do, what tools she would need on the road when she to take care of breakdowns because the cool thing about Harleys uh, back in the day was that you could fix them on the side of the road. And that was the purpose of them. That's why they were used so much in World War II. So the Harley history I had to learn about. She was a fabulous discovery for me because I didn't have any world history going in. She didn't know anything about where the vampires came from or what their origination story was. She didn't even know what she was, except that she had this puma creature. Let me point to the one behind me whose tail I'm sitting under. This puma creature living inside her with her and that she could turn into this puma creature. She wasn't a weird cat because she could turn into other creatures, other mammals, and predominantly other predators. So I discovered her as I went along. The first book was a hard transition. Yeah. This is Skinwalker. Yeah. It was a really hard transition for my brain. Because I had come from woman in Jeopardy, Jeopardy type stories. And here I am writing a woman hunter. It is titled Rift in the Soul. It will be out the first week of March. Y'all go to your favorite bookstores and put it on, on uh, pre-order it or pre-order it online. All of the lost items and all of the Arconciels and all of the were creatures with which Nell is surrounded on Soulwood and in Scyled, which is the Psychometric Law Enforcement Division, all of those things come together. And the ending of the Jane book, the final Jane book, something happened to the vampires. Because those two have kind of been, those two series have been interwoven in terms of the backstory. The final thing that happened to the vampires and final air happens in the final book. And this, what I'm assuming will be the final book of Nell, Rift in the Soul. 
and she is faced with dealing with it. And nobody knows what has happened, but the vampires are different. So she is in danger from all of them and from the Arkansas, which are the light dragons who um, don't belong in this world and just now found that they could go home. Yeah, I didn't want to just use vampires because so, and I changed them a little bit from, from what, what other people had done before, but vampires have a, a pretty stable origination um, appearance, I should say, in, in our own history. So my origination story had to be very different, but I wanted these new characters, which are dragons who are made of energy and yet can take on a form of, of matter, therefore being big cats or uh, birds or whatever. And these particular characters would not be bound by um, the, the laws of, and I'm going to forget it, but the law of, of matter and energy. These characters would be outside of that because they didn't come from here. And they are predators on their world. They are, they don't really have compassion in the sense that we understand compassion. They don't understand um, the way humans think. They think they're strange. They think they're weird. The benefit of doing a vampire character or a weird creature character is that they are also human. And that makes them very easy to write. My characters could take the form of human. These Arkansas could take the forms of humans, but they were not. They were essentially um, from another planet. So they were me sticking my toe into the waters of science fiction. What would it be like if one of those people or a group of those creatures, human, we call them people because they think, they reproduce, they... Uh, they interact with us. So they're people, right? But they're not. They don't have brains like ours. And that was so much fun to write. Here are these creatures trapped on earth with humans who make no sense to them whatsoever. Audible gave me an offer to write something totally different as an Audible original. They, they wanted to be the editor. They wanted to be the only ones having it. I didn't want to do a whole book because that takes me a long time to write. So they agreed to buy um, three novellas. And I had written novellas published in um, the uh, compilations, most of them, over the course of the year. So I, I knew how to write to that different time format. And by time, I mean creative time and, and the arc of the plot and the arc of the character time. All of those are different when you go to a different word count. So I knew I could do it. And I said, okay, I want to come up with something different. I got that. I want to do, I want to do what, ha what happens to the world after World War III when humans have been changed by mistakes humans made and they aren't really human anymore. So I could still have my weirdness, which I like very much. And I have these characters who are altered by nanobots that were intended to only stay in a particular type of ant. And they instead figured out how to species jump. And here we are with people who are now being affected by the creation of the ants get people get bitten now they're changed so i think it's i think it's it worked out and it was so much fun and now the cats are being affected by it and my character didn't realize the cats were being affected by it now she does so starting out with um, the first junkyard cats was introducing to my character that she wasn't alone in the world, that there were, that she could accidentally transfer what she was to others and going through that backstory and then, oh dear, 
she has now transferred this nanobot change that works on the genetic level to the cats. What does that mean and how does that change her life? So it's a, it's a futuristic world. It, my character lives in a junkyard. She has access to a crashed USS United States spaceship uh, crashed on her property. So she has access to top-notch tech, but she can't tell anybody because the government would come take it away. She also has an alien ship with a dead alien in it on her property who were involved in a battle at the end of the war. So here's my weird character. I have had so much fun with her and Junkyard Roadhouse will come out this summer. It's the fourth one. Uh, it is not an audible original. So the audio and the print and the uh, eBooks will all come out at the same time. And I'm very excited about that. And I think it's going to be June or July.